The Shirangama Sutra, Fascicle 7 of 10, translated from Chinese into English by Charles Luck. Chapter 6 Bodhisattva Development into Buddhahood. Ananda rose from his seat, prostrated himself with his head at the feet of the Buddha, and said, We were ignorant and sought only knowledge by listening. This is why we failed to forsake the worldly mind. Now, after we have heard with great benefit the Buddha's compassion and instruction on the right practice of sublimation, our bodies and minds experience great comfort. World Honored One, in this practice of Buddha Samadhi and before attaining Nirvana, what are the progressive steps from the manifestation of dry, that is, unfertilized wisdom, through the 44 stages of Bodhisattva development to the realization of universal enlightenment. After saying this, he prostrated himself and together with the whole assembly reverently stared at the Buddha and awaited his compassionate voice. The Buddha praised Ananda and said, Excellent, excellent. It is good that on behalf of this assembly and of all living beings in the Dharma ending age who will practice samadhi in their quest of Mahayana, you can ask for my instruction on the unsurpassed path from the worldly condition to transcendental parinirvana. Listen attentively to what I now tell you. Ananda and the assembly brought their palms together and concentrated their minds to receive the teaching. The Tathagata store from which arise both sansara and nirvana. The Buddha said, Ananda, you should know that the absolute nature is completely enlightened. It is beyond name and form and is fundamentally free from either the world or living beings. Because of ignorance there arises birth, which is followed by death. So birth and death are unreal, and the wiping out of the unreal brings about the real, which is called Supreme Bodhi and Parinirvana. Hence these terms imply the twofold transmutation of Klesha and Sansara into Bodhi and Nirvana. Ananda, if you now wish to achieve the state of Samadhi in order directly to reach the Tathagata's Parinirvana, you should know, first, the two inverted causes which lead to the existence of living beings and the world. The non-arising of these inversions is the Tathagata's true state of Samadhi. The Origin of Living Beings and the World Ananda, what are these two inversions? Because of the mind's arbitrary awareness of the underlying bright nature, the latter, which is fundamentally enlightened, becomes an objective form, as opposed to a false perception. Thus, from fundamental nothingness arises actual phenomena. Therefore, the existence of ignorance and its creation of the world and living beings, the causeless cause of subjective ignorance and its objective creation, and subjective living beings dwelling in their objective abode, the world, have no real basis. From reality, which does not abide anywhere, spring the world and living beings. The Inverted Cause of the Existence of Living Beings What is the inverted cause of the seeming existence of living beings? The faulty awareness of completely enlightened nature creates a falsehood which has neither nature nor basis. If you wish to restore the real, this very wish pertains to the samsaric mind and is not related to absolute nature. If the unreal mind is used to recover real nature, the latter will be unreal, and of necessity there follow illusory birth and existence as well as unreal mind and dharma, which will unfold endlessly and will gain in intensity, thereby creating new karma, and so responses from those sharing the same karma. This karmic responsiveness leads to the interdependence of births and deaths, hence the inverted cause of the seeming existence of living beings, the inverted cause of the existence of the world. Ananda, what is the inverted cause of the world, that is, the realm of space and time? Because of the illusory existence of ignorance 
and its creation of the world and living beings, there arises the mortal lot clinging to space. Because of the causeless cause of subjective ignorance and its objective creation, and because of subjective living beings dwelling in their objective abode, all unfolding continuously and transitorily, time arises. Thus, the three aspects of time and the four cardinal points of space intermingle and combine to produce the twelve, three times four, categories of beings. The Twelve Types of Transformation Therefore, in the world, movement leads to sound sound to form, form to smell, smell to touch, touch to taste, and taste to thoughts or dharma. These six illusions contribute to the formation of karma, which causes the division into twelve, that is six illusions each for body and mind, different types of change. Hence the wheel turning in sansara, wherein these illusory sense data end in twelve different transformations in each rotation. That is, each false thought turns the wheel and contributes to these twelve types of births. The Twelve Groups of Living Beings Such inversion that turns the wheel of sansara creates twelve groups of species born of eggs, wombs, humidity, and by transformation, having forms, being beyond form, thoughtful or thoughtless, having neither form nor no form, and being neither thoughtful nor thoughtless. Ananda, because of the turning wheel of illusion in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective stirring minds, both subject and object are in harmony and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 rising and sinking confused thoughts which form the embryos or kalala, in eggs for incarnation as fishes, birds, turtles, snakes, etc. They are found in plenty all over the world. This is birth from eggs. Because of the turning wheel of moral infection in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective sensual minds, both subject and object sustain each other and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 confusing divergent thoughts which become fetuses or arbuda in the wombs for incarnation as men, animals, dragons, immortal beings, etc. They are found in plenty all over the world. This is birth from wombs. Because of the turning wheel of attachment in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective craving minds, both subject and object inflame each other and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 vacillating confused thoughts which become damp embryos or pishi, in humidity for incarnation as crawling insects and wriggling worms. They are found in plenty all over the world. This is birth from humidity. Because of the turning wheel of change in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective deceitful minds, both subject and object stimulate each other and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 changing confused thoughts taking the shape of solid lumps or ghana, for incarnationist beings which shed their skins, change their forms, and fly. They are found in plenty all over the world. This is birth by transformation. Because of the turning wheel of stiff dispositions in objective sansara as a result of inversion caused by subjective hindering minds, both subject and object adhere and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 mystical, translucent, and confused thoughts, which take solid form to incarnate as people whose luminous quality forebodes good and evil. They are found in plenty all over the world. These are heretics and mystics having forms. Because of the turning wheel of dissipating dispositions in objective sansara as a result of inversion caused by subjective deluded minds, both subject and object unite with dullness and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 confusing mysterious thoughts for formless rebirth as beings whose bodies and minds are dissolved in the great emptiness. They are found in plenty all over the world. These are formless beings. 
because of the turning wheel of fanciful dispositions in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective imaginative minds. Both subject and object unite with recollection, and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 latent and firmly confused thoughts, to be reborn as ghosts or spirits of thoughtful beings. They are found in plenty all over the world. These are thoughtful beings. Because of the turning wheel of dull dispositions in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective stupid minds. Both subject and object cling to intractableness and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 confusing lifeless thoughts for rebirth as spirits dwelling in earth, trees, metals, and stones. They are thoughtless beings that are found in plenty all over the world. These are thoughtless beings. Because of the turning wheel of parasitic dispositions in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective guileful minds, subject and object infect each other and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 confusing commensal thoughts for rebirth as beings who are formless, yet have form, such as jellyfish, which use shrimps as their eyes. They are found in plenty all over the world. These are beings which are beyond, yet have, form. Because of the turning wheel of seductive dispositions in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective artful minds, both subject and object rely on magic and spells, and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 entreating confused thoughts, for rebirth as beings with form, yet formless, who grow weary of witchcraft. They are found in plenty all over the world. These are beings with form, yet beyond form. Because of the turning wheel of deceitful dispositions in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective tricky minds. Both subject and object combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 interchanging confused thoughts, to be reborn as thoughtful yet thoughtless beings, such as wasps, which mistake larvae of other insects for their own. They are found in plenty all over the world. These are thoughtful yet thoughtless beings. Because of the turning wheel of revengeful dispositions in objective sansara, as a result of inversion caused by subjective murderous minds, both subject and object unite in whimsy and combine to produce favorable conditions for 84,000 fantastic thoughts of patricide and matricide to be reborn as beings who are thoughtless yet thoughtful, such as certain owls and tigers, which respectively devour their mothers and fathers. They are found in plenty all over the world. These are thoughtless yet thoughtful beings.